Despite the ongoing Islamic State advance in Syria and Iraq, Washington is not preparing to take more decisive steps against the extremists. That's according to Barack Obama, who told military chiefs from 21 allied countries to prepare for a drawn-out war that will involve ups and downs for the U.S.-led allies. This is going to be a long-term campaign. Uh, there are not quick fixes involved. We're still at the early stages. As with any military effort, uh, there will be days of progress and there are going to be periods of setback. Obama pledged to continue bombing the militants in Syria and Iraq, but admitted that Islamic State can't be defeated by airstrikes alone. There's no mention of any plans for a ground operation. Anti-war activist Brian Becker thinks Washington will eventually send in the troops anyway. The big picture for the United States is this. There is a genuine crisis because the Islamic State, largely as a consequence of failed U.S. policies and policies that have, should have never been implemented, including the fracturing of Iraq and the fracturing of Syria, the Islamic State now is a growing military force. It has the military initiative. Washington doesn't want to send boots on the ground, not their own anyway, perhaps Turkish boots or other boots or Kurdish boots, but they don't want to send American troops to fight because it will become politically a catastrophe at home. Public opinion will go uh, very much in an anti-war position, but they can't really defeat the Islamic State just by bombing them. So there is a quandary here, a real genuine crisis for the Pentagon and the uh, civilian political establishment. Uh, it's going to escalate, though, because there's no backing down now. Uh, if they can't win the war through bombing, which they can't, they will escalate, and that will eventually mean ground troops. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth goodwill toward men. The angel shouted, the Prince of Peace is here. The prophet's words are fulfilled. The Messiah has come. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is with us. Preaching good news to the poor, binding up the brokenhearted, proclaiming freedom for the captives and release from darkness to the prisoners. Two thousand years later, fire bombs and tear gas in ancient Bethlehem, the world in distress by the bad blood that had hate and war. Millions are plagued by unprecedented suffering and despair. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famine and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. America, a society in chaos, feelings of tension in our streets, hostile confrontation, bitter crowds lashing out in protest on one issue after another. Our generation completes hellish divorce for turning friends into enemies, ripping families apart, eager to be run. Adult children talk about dark years of family abuse and hatred. Distraught mother kills her baby. The living boyfriend is blamed. The machine of nihilism has destroyed the idea that there is truth, leaving the youth disillusioned and angry. This is the backdrop of the stage where millions long for peace on earth. A world of the blind leading the blind in the dark. Christ warned us of the coming wars and rumors of war. In conflict, still he promises peace for all who believe in him. Listen closely. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives who I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The world and all its efforts do not give lasting peace to you. It only has lies and pain and remain history to you. Lonely and cold, each year adding to the sorrow in our lives, we reach for anything but God to fill our emptiness. Still denying ourselves the belief and hope for real love, joy, and peace. Jesus Christ promises us peace for our weary soul if only we trust in Him. Anything else we try is evil and empty. Listen closely. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives, do I give. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Remember, war and hate is rooted in the human heart. For years we have tried to obtain, but still we fight and covet, like an unplugged cord dangling in the abyss. Our life find a God. Our soul hangs lifelessly severed and separated by our pride and unwillingness to believe that we can be loved, forgiven, and held by God Himself. The nations will collide around you. Your world may crash. But if you trust and believe in Jesus Christ to save you, then you will have true peace in your soul. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world. But because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. It is by grace you have been saved.